Hi there, welcome to the Schwelpen's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Click that red button. It's right for my first project. I'm going to upcycle two of these little dinner plate wicker baskets. They're meant for when you're at a picnic and you've got a flimsy paper plate and you can put it on top here and then you can have a nice sturdy surface for your food. But I'm going to give them an upcycle. They're going to get some paint. I've got two of them here. This one is sort of a sage color and the next one I'm going to do a little bit of a lighter shade. I have some of this ticking striped fabric that I'm going to cut into a circle and that will be the base for my design on these wicker baskets. I'm just going to cut out two circles, just folded them in half and I did trace out one of the baskets and I'm just going to make sure that I can get as round of a circle as possible. I have more of these rub-on transfers from Essential Stencil and these are some beautiful peonies. I thought these would be perfect with the sage green color of the baskets and the ticking stripe. So I'm going to cut out this one that's got a, two of them together and that will be for one of the circles. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a different design for the second circle. This is the first time I'm applying these particular rub-on transfers to fabric and I'm using the same little ruler plastic tool that I usually use for when I'm putting it on wood or glass but this wasn't sharp enough. It didn't have enough of a contact with the transfer and the fabric. It wasn't sturdy enough so I wasn't able to get this to stick. I ended up switching to my Cricut spatula and just going to town because the top plastic is really thick and that worked out well. I started out using the flat portion of the spatula, but that didn't work either. So I put it on its side and used one of the edges and that was the ticket. I was able to very easily just scratch over the rub on transfer and I could actually see the plastic pulling away from the transfer and that's what you want to see you want to see that pattern lighten up a little bit and that lets you know that everything is working out great place my circles right inside of the two wicker baskets and then I'm going to just start lifting up the edges and using hot glue to glue it in place I found that this was easier just lifting up each of the corners per se and then just folding the fabric back and adding the hot glue where I needed it. Just around the edges, I didn't put anything on the middle of it. I have this off-white cotton rope that I get from a local craft store and it is about the same color as the nautical rope that you can get from the Dollar Tree, but it's a lot thinner. It's more like the jute rope that they have. So I like this size much better. And I'm just going to use hot glue again and just use this as a little frame or a border all the way around the circle. And that will just clean it up really nicely. For a final touch on each of these baskets, I added a white rope bow to the one and then a green sort of sagey color bow to the other one and I really love how these turned out. I think you could call them French country. You'll have to let me know what you think of these two baskets. I really like the colors of this basket. You don't really see this dark color anymore too much. So what I'm going to do though, because it's really old, is I'm just looking for the nicest round area and I'm going to take my tin snips and cut it in half all the way. I have this old frame as well and I took a piece of MDF board that had already been painted. I took it out to my table saw and just cut it till it would be the right shape and size for the frame. And I'm going to use hot glue to just glue it all in place. This is just going to become the backing. I took the glass out, the backing of the frame out. I don't need any of that. Whenever I'm gluing 
a piece of board into a frame or the glass into the frame, I like to put some extra hot glue on the top of it and then just really make it nice and thick so it comes in contact with the frame itself and the board or the glass. Now I'm going to take the half basket and I'm going to use hot glue to glue it in place right at the bottom of the frame and onto the board. I'm going to just use a lot of hot glue on the inside, on the bottom, on the outside a little bit, and you actually won't even see it because I'm going to be covering up those sides with something else in a little bit. Then I went to my Cricut and I cut out a stencil just using a scrap piece of vinyl. This says Fresh Flower Market and I'll have this available as a free printable on my website. You'll find the link for that down in my description box. I'm just weeding out the letters first because this is actually reverse weeding. You want to be weeding out what you want to stencil, not the background. Then I'll just grab a piece of my transfer tape and transfer that right to the top of the sign. I like to use the little makeup sponges that you can get in a pack at the Dollar Tree for stenciling. It just gives me a little bit more control and I also get a lot more coverage this way with the stencil brushes that are so stiff. It's sometimes you're pouncing a lot to get the coverage that you need and sometimes those bristles can slip underneath your stencil so i'm just going to be very careful giving this a light coat and then i'll let it dry for a minute or two and then go over it one more time i forgot to mention that i also painted the frame with just a little bit of black and brown paint mixed together and that just gave it a nice deep rich look the same as the basket and then the bottom part of the basket I gave that just a little freshening up of paint as well but I left that lighter brown strip there and I think that looks really cool. I added some styrofoam to the inside of this basket and now I'm just working on pulling off some Spanish moss. I'm just going to put that sort of to the front a little bit just to camouflage the white of the styrofoam and check out what was in the bag of Spanish moss. It was an old pine cone. Like where did that come from? Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, fix this all up and then we'll start adding some florals. These flowers that I'm using came from Timu. I got a bag of them I think there were a hundred pieces. They didn't have any stems on them, but that's okay because I've always got some leftover stems. So I just added the blossoms to some of these stems and then I've also got some individual ones. And I am just going to fill up this little basket with a bunch of these sunflowers and it's going to look so pretty, so nice and full once it's done. For these larger ones, I did have to use my little scissors and just poke a hole in the styrofoam just to help get it started. But I really had a lot of fun just arranging these in sort of a pile or a mound right inside this basket. I also added a little bit of greenery and then I had a few sunflowers trailing down the one side and then I hot glued a couple on the other side just to camouflage the bottom there where you can see the frame, the little corners there. So I think this turned out super cute. You'll have to let me know what you think. This basket was a thrift store find. It was that regular honey brown kind of gold color. I gave it a couple of coats of white spray paint inside and out. Then I created this little label and I printed this off on rice paper. I'm going to trim it right up close to the label edge and then I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply it to the basket. When you're putting square pieces of paper or tissue or whatever it may be onto something that is round, you need to adjust for that. So at the top, I'm going to just trim the edges a little bit rounded, sort of rounded down. And then for the bottom, I'm going to be rounding that in the center a little bit. It's hard to explain, but when you take a look at it this way on the basket, you can see where you need to adjust it. 
If you haven't used rice paper before, it is a really nice thing to print on. This one happened to have some little green leaves in it, which I thought was okay. And I'm going to be giving the basket quite a thick layer of Mod Podge because of all those little weaves in there. I want this to stick really well. I'm going to be putting the label on and then using my finger to push it right into all of the weaves and the bumps and everything. So I want this to stick really well I don't want it to look like it's floating on top I want it to actually take on the texture and dimension of the basket itself when I'm working with Mod Podge I like to work in sections so I just started with about an inch at the top and then I worked in my rice paper and now I'm going to add glue to the rest of the basket and continue working it in until it's fully secure because this is a little bit thicker than tissue paper, I am going to go over the top of it with Mod Podge and just make sure that it's sealed in really well. I love putting things on candlesticks and spindles and if you've been with me for a while you know that I do a lot of that. I just think it elevates a piece and makes it look so pretty. So the candlestick that I'm going to be using is wood and it's dark brown and I don't want to paint it so I'm just adding a little bit of brown antiquing wax to the edges of the basket and I'm going to go a little bit on the inside of it too. Just more like a dry brush effect so it has a little bit of color and texture and blends in much better with the brown candlestick. Next I took my drill and I drilled a hole right in the center of the basket all the way through and the reason I did this is because the candlestick that I'm using has one of those little spikes inside of it and that's where you're supposed to just jam your pillar candle right in and then it won't tip but I didn't want to take that off they're so hard to get off and I thought that's a perfect idea because then I'll be able to put some hot glue right in the hole and a little bit of hot glue all the way around and then that will ensure that the candlestick stays securely on the basket once it's dry I've got a beautiful rustic basket that would look great in any type of decor. I just love thrifting these small little baskets. I think this one is absolutely adorable. Of course, it's got that regular wicker color again, so we definitely need to upcycle this and make it a beauty in itself. I'm taking some white chalk paint, and actually this is Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Picket Fence, and I'm using a pointed sash brush from Fusion as well. That just helps to get into all of the little nooks and crannies. It's also going to help me create a really nice line up at the top where the band is. I'm going to be leaving the band this color and I just thought that would be a really nice accent for this basket. I also gave the inside of the basket a couple of coats because I'm not going to be putting anything in it or gluing any florals in this. I wanted this basket to just kind of be on its own and then you could fill it with whatever you wanted. To accent this, I'm just taking this beautiful black ribbon with a beautiful white stitching all along it, and I'm going to hot glue it right underneath that band. And I think the combination of the white, that honey brown, and this black really makes this basket look so elegant. It's simple, but looks so high end. I love this basket. This last project was really easy to put together. I had this basket that I had redone last year. It was painted white, so I just spray painted it with a sort of linen colored chalk paint. Then all I did was put it right on top of this candlestick that I found at a thrift store and these two colors blended together really nicely. I decided to leave the handle up 
So I hot glued it in place and I really liked that effect much better than having the handle just hanging down. And I didn't really want to remove it because I was afraid that I would damage the basket. So these two pieces together, you don't always have to do a lot to create some beautiful decor with baskets. You can just add two pieces together and this is what you get. I hope you enjoyed my upcycling some boring baskets into breathtaking beauties. If you did, please give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Bye for now.